ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ನ್ಯೂ ಬ್ಲಾಗ್ ಟುಡೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇವತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೇಲಿ ಏನೋ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ಕೀಪ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಏನಿದು ಕೃಷ್ಣನ್ ತೋರಿಸ್ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆ ತೋರಿಸ್ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ದೆನ್ ಸೊ ಗಾರ್ಲಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆನಿಯನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಕೋಸ್ ಪಲ್ಯ ಬಿಸಿಬೇಳೆ ಬಾತ್ ವೆಜ್ ಕುರ್ಮ ಕೋಸಂಬ್ರಿ ಜಾಮೂನ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಫ್ರೈಡ್ ರೈಸ್ ಸೊ ಈ ಥರ ಒಂದು ಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇದು ಥರ್ಡ್ ಟೈಮ್ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೇಲಿ ನಡೀತಾ ಇರೋದು ಸೊ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಡೆನ್ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ನನಗೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪರಿಚಯ ಆಗಿದ್ದು ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಅವರು ಸೊ ಪರಿಚಯ ಆಗಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜನ್ಮಾಷ್ಟಮಿಗೆ ನನಗೆ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ವಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಮೈ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಇನ್ವಿಟೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೇಲಿ ಒಂದು ಸತಿ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಸೊ ಇವರೆಗೂ ನಾವು ಥ್ರೀ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಹಿಟ್ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂದರೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ನವರಾತ್ರಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಈ ಥರ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದ್ದು ನಮಗೆ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡೆನ್ಮಾರ್ಕ್ ಇಂದ ಇವರು ಬಂದಿರೋ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತೆಯ ಓವ್ಯೂ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಫಾರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಒನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ ಒಂದು ಮೂರು ಜನ ಹೊಸೊಬ್ರು ಬಂದಿದ್ರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವೇ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇವರು ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ and some years back in time they were not as advanced materially so some of the films when they made like different effects it was like very ancient it was not very like if you see from the hollywood stand or the western stand mm. you're like you know he had a smile on the lips yeah. because it was very like faint quaint yeah. wasn't it? but in that film now personally i know it's that was in the past and of course bollywood the indian film which is the biggest film industry in the world they are like gotten up to the material level of present day visual effects and everything so we saw a clip from that and it was amazing and really well done wow. and the mahabharat is an amazing book yes. and you can get it also in audio book and it's just incredible anyway it's a big political intrigue going it happened 5000 years back in india at the turn of a new age according to the vedas there are four different ages and they're like they're cyclical they're coming and going one after the other just like the the seasons like winter uh spring summer autumn all it goes like in a cycle right and the same with these four ages they call satya treta dvapara and kali and we are present in what's called the kali yuga which is the last of the cycle and kali yuga is the most degraded age of them all where spiritual qualities in in previous ages people had a very high level of spiritual understanding and also materially speaking um and they even had technology which is completely far off it's not like the modern technology it was a different kind of technology and in the mahabharat there's also some examples of that technology that for instance they had a military technology 
which vastly sur surpasses what we have today. And someone may doubt, you know, how can that be, po be possible? We have all these advanced weapons. We have atomic weapons. We have all kinds of nuclear weapons and sophisticated stuff. That's true. If we see back in known Western history, we are far ahead of, you know, previous ages. But in the Mahabharata, it's described that they had different kinds of, like, not only fire weapons, which is compared to the modern <coughs> nuclear weapon, atomic weapons, but they had water weapons, they had wind weapons, and other stuff. And uh, they, they created these weapons by sound vibration. So the warriors at that time, the warrior class called the Chatriyas, they had a very, some of them, they had a very elevated consciousness. So the big warriors, they could, in the middle of the battlefield, they could pronounce different mantras and touching water. They made what's called achman, a very short purificatory process by sipping water. And then they chanted the mantras, invocations, and then they, with the help of an arrow, that arrow was infested with a very metaphysical potency. So from that arrow, they could create uh, enormous amounts of water coming out and submerging the others. And they could create what's called the Brahmastra, which is a fire, one of the most powerful weapons described. And that was like an atomic weapon. But that weapon wasn't like the modern atomic weapon. It could be directed towards a certain <laughs> target. So they could direct it against one single person and that person would be blasted by atomic energy. Nothing could withstand it, except they had counter weapons. So warriors on the other side, they, if they knew the counter weapon, if they were advanced enough, they could counter a fire weapon with a water weapon and the other way. So that's all described in the Mahabharata, and the Bhagavad Gita is part of that Mahabharata. It's one chapter. So in that situation, that scene, in that, it was a great political intrigue with what, what was called the Pandava brothers, five brothers, very saintly kings. They were all Chadrias, and they were kings also, they were princes. And one of them, one of the brothers called Yudhishthir, he was to be the next king for a great, great area. But his cousins, another part of the family called the Kurus, they were very envious, some of the leading members. And it became a lot of political <laughs> intrigue in the Mahabharata, and then it resulted in a big uh, uh, fratricidal war it, between two sides of the same family. And they gathered all the military forces uh, behind them. So there was a huge battle in a place called Kurukshetra in the northern part of India. Uh, that's still there, it's a holy place. <clears throat> so they gathered all the soldiers there, and they fought amongst themselves. Elephants, horses, cavalry, it was all there. And they were very ferocious. These warriors, they were very big, very powerful. <clears throat> like today in India, you can see in some of the museums, you can see huge uh, swords. And the, the idea, people think today, all of these were two-handed swords, right? Because they're so big and heavy. But no, they weren't two-handed swords. They were one and normal swords. But the warriors were so big, people were very big at that time. And especially the warriors, they were like, you know, you just saw them and you knew, you don't mess with that guy. Okay. <laughs> because it wasn't only they were physically very strong, that was a profession, that was a nature. But they were very courageous. They're not like the warriors, the generals today, you know, they're hiding behind something and they send out all the troops. No, the generals were out there in the front, you know. One of them called uh, Bhishma. He was actually in age. He was very. He was quite old, but he was a, he was a general. He was so enormously powerful. Even though he was he was a grandfather, he was so great that nobody could really conquer him. He was immensely powerful. So anyway, so they had these weapons, and they had one hand. They had these huge, you know, swords and and, and Arjun. And here in, on the front cover of the book, you see Krishna in the Vedas describe his supreme personality of Godhead. 
the only book in the world with some authority where a person actually claims to be God in the Bhagavad Gita. And Arjuna is behind him on the, on the chariot. <clears throat> and Arjuna, he was, an, uh, he was a uh, bowman, as you can see, an archer. And his, his skills in, in archery was like out of any film you can see in, the, in Hollywood. He could shoot the arrows so it was like you couldn't see his arm moving back. It was going so fast. And he could shoot so many arrows. It was incredible. And he had actually Arjuna because in those times people had that high consciousness. Some of them were actually in touch with higher beings, higher planets, actually aliens, we would call them, beings from the Svarga Loka, the, the heavenly region. And some of the warriors, because of their piety, because they were very God conscious, they could contact these higher beings, and sometimes they got boons. So Arjuna, he got the boons from different demigods, meaning it was people from higher planets. There are some higher planets where people are demi-gods. They are godly. They're not God, but they're godly because they're very, very pious. It's higher planets. So on those higher planets, people can go there. We can go there if we are very pious. And they live for a vast period of time. And in the heavenly planets, they simply enjoy life on a level we can imagine. It's material. It's not spiritual. It's material. But it's very refined. So they don't get old like we do. They don't get wrinkles. The liver doesn't stop functioning. They're very strong. And they're also warriors. Part of the men, they're warriors. But they simply enjoy vast. Their senses are more subtle than ours. They're not so gross physically. So they can enjoy life like anything. So it's all there. So anyway, some of these heavenly people, they came to earth. <coughs> because in previous times people were very, much more pious. So some of these demigods, they came down to this earthly planet. planet. And uh, the very pious people could have contact with them. They came, some of the kings had huge sacrifices, fire sacrifices. Like you may see even today on films from India, especially South India. Are you from South India? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we are from Lord South India. Yeah, I thought you were from <laughs> South India. Yes. So they still you can see on the on YouTube. You can go and you can see some of these fire sacrifices. The chant, the Vedic mantras. Om Tai Vishnu Paramang Padang Sada Pashyam. So that was a short clip. At a 10 minutes it is any because it was really very interesting to listen from him. So now towards the end of the program, Ivag Naivedya is there. So what all the need in Madhite, other Malla Naivedya is too, and then Prasada Thawan TV. There's a spoon there. Yeah. Everything will be for it? Yes, you can. Let's see. Last time. Huh? Oh. Drink the okay. water. Yeah. 
perfect. So this is how our evening was with Hare Krishna Denmark. It was a very meaningful evening. Our first day of Navratri 2020. And if you did like my video, please like, share and comment below. And thanks for watching. Bye.